Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what is, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man cannot came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. do not know, uh, this weekend is, each year, is the weekend that our diocesan uh, convention uh, meets, uh, where we address the needs of the, of the diocese. Uh, and each year, your clergy are delegates to that, and then we have three uh, parishioners, uh, lay parishioners, who are lay members uh, for that convention. And each year, I ask that they do a presentation to you regarding basically the, the last bit of time that we spent together, mostly this morning, uh, in convention. Kathy Hart is here this, eve this afternoon uh, to give you a report on that. Uh, Kathy was a delegate for this convention, and she's also a member of your vestry. Kathy? He says, good afternoon, but for me, it's evening. I don't know. I go to bed at 8, so this is evening. <laughs> uh, this um, is going to be a participatory report. So I have something to teach you, and then I will say the point, and you will all say these words. I think they're pretty easy. You can memorize them. It's from Revelation 21.5. See, I make all things new. So we're going to practice. You ready? See, See I, I make, make all things, things new. Good. I knew this group was good, so this is why I, well, actually, I, I kind of got this by process of elimination because the other two picked the other services, so here I am. But thank you for welcoming me. And as he said earlier today, I had the privilege of representing Iona Hope at the 53rd Annual Convention of the Diocese, that's hard to say sometimes, of Southwest Florida, but fortunately from the comfort of our own church library. I was joined by Allison Kinch. Joe Molino, Father Ray, and Mother Susie. And I say it was a privilege because not only did I get to spend the morning praying, voting, and laughing with these four wonderful people, but I also got to see a glimpse of how our diocese works, which was quite helpful for me because I'm new to the Episcopal Church. The Diocese of Southwest Florida comprises 79 churches stretching from Tampa all the way to Marco Island and reaching as far west as Plant City, Arcadia, and LaBelle. 101 clergy, I think was the final count, and 155 lay delegates attended this convention via Zoom for the second year in a row, 
as the diocese adjusted plans to keep folks safe during the midst of this pandemic. Each year, the diocese adopts a theme around which to organize the convention. And this year, the theme came from Revelation 21.5, where God says, See, See I, make I make all things new. You're good. In his address to the convention, Bishop Dabney Smith highlighted some things that were made new during his tenure so far as Bishop of Southwest Florida Diocese. The Episcopal Charities Fund was established in 2007 to support grants for parish-based outreach and special needs ministries. The fund made its first distributions in 2011, the same year that a new parish was formed in South Fort Myers. And I'll see if any of you happen to know what that new church was. This is again participatory. It was? Iona Hope. Iona Hope. Okay, and now we can say everything. See, oh. I make all things new. Also occurring during Bishop Dabney's episcopacy was an increased commitment to the Day Spring Convention Center. And it's um, part of this uh, uh, improvement was extensive building and site renovations, as well as the expansion of both the camping opportunities for youth and children and the adult education programming. As part of this commitment to the renovation of Dayspring, the office of the diocese itself was moved to this location in Parrish, Florida. In 2017, the diocese responded to widespread damage caused by Hurricane Irma. In 2018, we had the privilege of having presiding Bishop Michael Curry attend convention to celebrate our 50th anniversary as a diocese. And I got to attend that with my uh, youngest daughter, Delaney. So that was, a real, that was a real treat. One of the highlights of the convention was getting to see how God makes all things new through the formation of communities of faith. We saw a video of a new worshiping community located in Parrish, Florida. We heard testimony of their journey from 12 worshipers in September of 2019 to now being a congregation of over 50 worshipers, growing even in the midst of this pandemic. Appropriately named the Church of the Apostles in honor of its beginnings as a group of 12, next month they will be celebrating their first confirmation class as new members join this community of faith. See? I make all things new. That's really just to keep you awake because, you know, reports get a little boring and dry. So that's, that's the whole point. Making space for new things to happen often means that other things must come to an end. This morning, we celebrated the ministry of bishops Garrison and Howe, who have faithfully assisted Bishop Dabney for the past 20, 10 years. They will be stepping down from service to make space for a, oh, now let's see if I can say it, co- Oh, coadjutor. Co Thank you. That's another one of those Episcopal words that I had never heard. Coadjutor to join Bishop Dabney in 2022. And a coadjutor is just a fancy word for the new bishop, the successor to the bishop who's going to be coming in. And this individual who has yet to be selected will work with Bishop Dabney until his retirement. And then this person will assume the role of Bishop of the Diocese of Southwest Florida. Similarly, we celebrated the work and ministry of Canon Ann Vickers, who has served as the diocesan CFO for numerous years and was resigning her position to spend time traveling with her husband now that their nest is empty and they have the time and resources do, to do so. Although her title is Canon of Finance and Administration, a position I would never want in a billion years, Ms. Vickers spoke eloquently and passionately about the Diocese of Southwest Florida three-fold vision. Honor our tradition. Number two, build for the future. And number three, mercy and mission. It was clear that Canon Vickers' commitment is to more than just a balanced budget and stable finances, although that is important too. Her commitment is first and foremost to God, who through Christ makes all things new. All delegates receive these uh, convention booklets with artwork provided by uh, last summer's campers at Day Spring Episcopal Center. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe, oh, you can on the screen. Oh, that's a little weird. I don't like that. I'm not going to look. Okay, the day, uh, this is some of the artwork. And uh, this, this artwork was based on, again, Revelation 
See, I make all things new. Together they thought and studied about what this meant and they reflected on it and then they created their own original artwork to illustrate the reflections. This uh, cover piece is done, was done by a 16-year-old junior counselor. This back one was done by a 10-year-old, which I think is remarkable. And then uh, this one was done uh, by a 12-year-old camper. And all the artwork is actually av available on the website if you want to see what some of the children and youth did. But I, I see in these illustrations themes of hope and promise, as the scripture from Revelation implies. But I also see from their inclusion in this distributed convention material, the diocese, the diocese, you can say that right, the diocese commitment to listening to the voices of children and youth, which for me personally is no small matter. The welcoming of the insights and contributions of children and youth into the convention signifies to me a humility and openness to the other. And it's that openness and welcoming of diversity which drew me to the Episcopal Church four years ago. Through radical hospitality and welcome of all, or the way of love, as presiding Bishop Curry likes to call it, I believe that God is making all things new in the Episcopal Church. At the end of Bishop Dabney's address, he asked the convention attendees these two questions. One, how do you live your Christian faith in the world. And two, he kind of expounds on that. What is the witness of your life in a world that is often fearful of faith and in a culture that does not reflect the hope of God making things new? The answer to these questions may be simple, but that doesn't mean that it's easy to do. When the world says, take, Christians say, give. When the world says dismiss, followers of Jesus say, care. When the world says avenge, we say, forgive. When the world says despair, Jesus' disciples say, hope. When the world says hate, we say, love. The list could go on. The point is, we help make things new by the way we choose to live in this world. Or as Bishop Dabney so aptly said, God has made us new so that we can be of service and help others experience the same newness and hope. See, I make, I make all, all things, things new. May it be so for all of us. And thank you for allowing me to serve. <laughs>